What up, peeps? What up, what up? What's up? Okay, I had to, I have to come here to Instagram because Facebook, for some reason, it's not working. Um, it's hard to, I don't know, the, the sound connection with my, the ear pot to the uh, phone, the iPhone, is just not working. What's up? Anyway, I just want to say hi, what's up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? Howdy. Um, and um, before I start, you know, talking about something, that, a very important subject, I just want to say, woohoo, yes. I'm happy. I'm super happy. I haven't been this happy in a long time. We, we won our victory. We are tri triumphant. We overcame it. We are victorious. We won. Democracy won. And that makes me super happy because I feel like the whole country, well, I feel like the majority, not the whole country, obviously, there's a big portion that are not happy. But a big part, a big portion of this country, it feels like we were all holding like a big old fart. You know when you're like hella constipated and you've been holding a fart for a long time and then you finally get to rip a big one when you finally get to fart and you just that. It's just this fucking loud ass, long ass fart, and then you feel so relieved. That's exactly how I feel. That's exactly how a lot of people feel after this election. We feel like we finally got to rip a big, big old fart, and now we're like, we can breathe. We can like, you know, feel like, like relaxed and and, and light, <laughs> like a feather. So yeah, it's amazing. So woohoo, yes. We won, baby. We won. Democracy won. So I'm glad that the orange Hitler, the fascist, malignant narcissist, is um, it's going to be out soon. It's not over yet. Uh, he's going to put up a big fight. Typical uh, malignant narcissist. You know, they uh, the word no doesn't register in their head. Uh, failure doesn't register in their head. Um, they don't take failure very well. Um, they are terrified of losing or coming across as, as a loser, as losers or as weak. That's very typical of a narcissistic, a malignant narcissistic people like him. And you can see that in history. All the authoritarian dictators, you know, they're very, they're sick in the head. They're sick individuals, like very narcissistic, very selfish no guilt, no remorse. They don't give a fuck about anyone but themselves. So, yeah, that's what you get. Uh, so I didn't expect any less from him. Uh, you know, he's acting like a three-year-old throwing a big tantrum. And he's trying to obstruct and do everything it's in his power to, uh, to fuck up the transition. But uh, Biden and his group, they already knew that. They planned for that. So the transition is going to happen whether he wants it or not. So yeah, suck it, 45, suck it, Cheeto. You will be kicked out. You have to leave. That's it. And if he doesn't want to leave, guess what? He's going to get kicked out. Oh, yeah. So anyway, sore losers. That's how they act, you know. Losers are losers, and he's a loser. So he's always been a loser his whole life, so he has to accept it. Just because you have money doesn't mean that you are successful. You can have all the money in the world, and you can be the biggest piece of shit, the biggest loser, the most idiotic, moronic, unintelligent, super trash person in the world. You don't need to be having money doesn't mean that you money doesn't buy class that's something that you earn that you learn that you're born with class and, and, and grace and he doesn't have that he never had it not with all the millions in the world he never had it he's a piece of shit so I'm sorry I'm sorry anyway I'm here I don't want to talk about that anymore I'm just happy I've oof, I've been so happy I haven't been this happy in a long time because I've been through a lot so I'm not going to talk about that in details but people that are close to me and know me they know exactly what I'm talking about and thank god um, right now I'm okay-ish enough to at least 
come up here and say what's up. Uh, I just wanted to talk about something, um, something very important and very uh, interesting. I had a, a convo, a conversation with a good friend. Hold on, give me a sec. Trying to do my lips. My lips get dry. I'm a uh, lip balm junkie. This is my favorite. Bird's bees. Oh, let's see. Maybe this. There you go. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Yeah, that's my favorite. I love that stuff. It's so good. Anyway, I want to come up here. Actually, what I wanted to come up to, I wanted to go live on Facebook, but I'm having uh, difficulties, technical difficulties with my apparatuses. I don't know why. So I came here, I'm going to record here, and I'm going to transfer it to Facebook. So anyway, I wanted to talk about something important. Uh, I want to talk about forgiveness. <sighs> the importance of forgiveness and the importance and the power in non-forgiving so this is my question and this is something a lot of people uh, deal with a lot of people struggle with especially religious people people that are very religious or spiritual they they struggle with this because you know religion tells you that you're supposed to forgive blah 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 forgiveness is it's it's healthy it's better it's good for you like if you forgive you know you don't retain that that ang anger and that resentment and because it, it, it's true Res hate anger all this stuff turns into resentment and that it's just literally poison for your body for your soul like when you you live in a constant state of fire or flight uh, that's not good for your for your nervous system it's not good for your health you you can literally get sick and and you know your body can develop all kinds of weird illnesses and diseases just because all of that bottled up anger, you know. So that's why they tell you, you know, it's it's so important to to release and to forgive because you're not really forgiven for other people. You're not forgiven what they did, but you're forgiven them in your head to just let go of that and move on. Which in most cases i agree i totally agree yet there are cases where forgiveness um is questionable and forgive forgiveness actually can it hurt you it can make you feel worse and it can backfire so my thing is I'm just gonna give an example what would you do actually i'm gonna ask you a question and and it's gonna serve as an example too so what would you do? Say so you have a child. You have a kid. You have a child is one, two, three, four, five. It's between the ages of one and five or one and six. You know, it's a toddler. It's a little kid. What would you do if someone rapes, brutally, sexually assaults your child, brutally rapes and tortures and abuse your child would you forgive that person I would love to uh, hear your answers um, I, I really I really would um, I'm really interested in your in your answers um, I, I like to hear feedback from people so if someone rapes brutally rapes your child your innocent beautiful good-hearted child would you be okay would you be in your head okay I'm gonna forgive you I'm gonna forgive you in my head so I don't you know have all this anger and I don't drink the poison and I'm just gonna forgive you in my head and I and you know I forgive you I forgive you for brutally raping my child do you think you can do that would you do that forgive a monster that not only rape you several times but beat you up choked you they beat you up and choked you almost to death 
several times someone that abused you and tortured you in ways that people cannot even fathom for years and years or someone that you met online and you went on a date innocently um, and almost killed you and, and raped you would you forgive that person I want to hear your answers so I had this convo with you know a couple of friends actually and uh, one of them is very religious and that person said that they are pro forgiveness and I partially agree with that person. I said, yeah, um, it helps sometimes. For example, um, there were a lot of people that hurt me, you know, throughout my life. From childhood to my teenager, my teen years, my, my young adult years, my adult grown years. Um, but I think it depends on the degree of the harm. I think it, it kind of it works similar the same as uh court the court system the the judicial judicial uh legal system you know there there are levels of of harm there are levels of of crimes so yeah the the petty crimes or the crimes that are not that harmful or that bad yeah they get punished but not as harshly as the big time crimes and i believe that's how a lot of us function you know there are levels of crime so there there are levels of of harm that people caused me in the past and the ones that you know were kind of mild to moderate I'm like it took me a while to to come to terms and to forgive them and when I say I forgave them I did not just talk to them and say hey by the way you know all that horrible fucked up shit you did to me I forgive you no I didn't do that um, those people, most of those people are either out of my life, completely cut off, or the few that I kind of stay connected to in a way, um, I keep way afar, well, far away from me. I keep them from a distance, from a very safe distance. And I have either zero, zero interaction or very little interaction with these folks. Uh, some of them I can be, um, some of them I can be uh I can be diplomatic I can be diplomatic too uh I can be polite um but I will never trust them again I will never want to have anything to do with them I don't want them in my life I don't want to hang around hang around them <laughs> I don't want to have nothing to do with them but you know sometimes once in a while they pop up you know in my in my facebook or in my social media and they say hi whatever and i say hi back and you know i'm i'm polite i'm i'm cordial i'm diplomatic but i don't like them i don't trust them cuz they broke they broke the trust they they uh crossed that boundary not once but many times they betrayed me and i do not do well with betrayal i just to me, that's a, that's the, the the ultimate boundary uh, breakage. <laughs> so yeah, um, and some folks, I just I have zero contact with. I totally cut them off. I disconnected from them because they're very toxic. They serve no purpose. Not even me being nice or polite to them. Or it's just these people are really toxic people. So very dangerous. Uh, so I keep, I just cut them off. I forgave them in my head, in my heart. Like, okay, this person is mentally disturbed and they have a lot of issues and they're toxic. And But there's nothing I can do. They cannot be fixed. They will never change. So I have to just cut them off. And then, those people I had, it took me a long time. But then I reached a point where I was able to forgive them. Um, but of course, forgiving doesn't mean that you forget about what they did to you. So just, you know, just forgive, just let go of that pain and that, you know, anger in your heart, in your, in your mind, in your soul, so in your body. But there are other levels. There are the motherfuckers that are 
full blown evil psychopaths. These motherfuckers do not deserve forgiveness at all. And let me tell you why. Your body, our bodies have this innate wisdom. Our bodies know when something is bad, when something's wrong. We, but the thing is, we sometimes we're so disconnected from our bodies that um, whether it's through trauma or society or your, your environment or you're busy, you're too busy doing other shit, and then we tend to not hear, not to listen to our bodies. Our bodies have this innate wisdom, which is called intuition, instinct, instincts. If you don't listen to your instincts, then you tend to overlook and override all the red flags that your environment sends you. So sometimes because we're not connected to our bodies, people send these red flags telling you, hey, I'm dangerous, but, or I, you know, I'm not good. But are we're so into you know we're so busy and busy and distracted and and or or uh or gaslighted we've been gaslighted and invalidated our whole lives that we were trained to not believe in ourselves we tr- we are trained to not validate our our feelings we're trained to uh, doubt ourselves so when that happens that's how you tend to override and overlook overlook uh, red flags and that's how you get in touch with people that are very toxic and 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 this dysfunctional and dangerous so so um when that happens um it makes us it makes it hard for us to to discern from good and bad and that's how you know you get involved with you know bad people or you get in a horrible relationship an abusive relationship and all this stuff so our bodies have that innate wisdom called intuition and your our bodies are smart and very efficient so our bodies tells us when something's wrong so let's say society religion or whatever your family your friends your environment tells you oh you have to forgive you have to let go because if you don't it's just gonna eat you up inside and blah 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 which is partially true true but there's the thing if your body is not ready for that if your body and your mind are not ready for that then that's counterintuitive that will backfire it will totally backfire and I know that because it happened to me because I was forced in a way I was kind of coerced and forced to even for, even therapists can harm you even some therapists if they're not really well versed if they don't have a lot of experience or they're not that great they can make you feel like oh you have to forgive you have to you know let go and not necessarily that's not good you know sometimes you have to listen to your body and if you're not ready to let go, if you're not ready to forgive, then that's your right to not forgive. You are in your total, valid, correct right to feel the way you feel and to not forgive any motherfucker that hurt you. If your body's not ready, you're not ready. As simple as that. And if you'll never, if you never become ready, and you never, and you can never forgive these motherfuckers, so be it. So what you have to do is to be conscious about it and be aware about it, aware of it, and find um, healthy uh, outlets and healthy coping mechanisms to deal with all the pain the trauma and the anger and all this stuff so it doesn't like fester inside of you it doesn't become this like festering um infectious um resentment that can literally it can harm you it can harm your health so yes you have to find really healthy outlets and 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 learn healthy coping mechanisms that help you to deal to process the trauma and the pain and then to deal with it and then let it go and then focus your energy and your thoughts onto positive things uh, positive self-talk um and all this stuff so you got to find these routes that you know help you to release that that 
amped up, uh, backed up energy. Whether it's exercise, exercise is great. It's an awesome. That used to be my favorite uh, outlet. My one of my favorite things to do when I, I I felt like I was I was not feeling good. I was feeling angry and resentful or 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 sad or anxious. Um, I would I love the the gym was my sanctuary. I used to go to the gym and work hard, like lift weights and do cardio or dancing. Dancing is another of my favorite ways of forms to release energy and to feel happy and make your body release the happy, make your body release those happy hormones, you know, like all the endorphins and dopamine and serotonin and all this stuff, all the good, the, the feel good neurotransmitters. Dancing is awesome. Exercising, lifting weights, cardio, uh, singing is awesome. Also, singing and humming activates your vagus nerve, which is in, which is in charge of your parasympathetic system, which is the system of your of our bodies that calms us down, that helps us, that keeps us calm. is is the system in charge of digestion, uh, reproduction, uh, relaxation, and all that stuff. Uh, so the vagus nerve is definitely activated when we sing and when we hum. So humming and singing is great. That's why monks, uh, people, Hindus and, and monks and, and, and Buddhists, people that, that practice um, Buddhism or Hinduism or practice yoga or Kundalini yoga, whatever, people that practice all this stuff, that's why they chant. It's not because of the words they're saying per se. It's because the 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 chanting, the act, the action of chanting, the vibration uh, activates your vag your vagal your vagus your vagus nerve, and your vagus nerve goes from all the way here and wraps around this area to your center and wraps around your stomach, your ab abdomen. So the vagal nerve comes from the brain, from this side, all the way wraps around here and all this area. So that's why when people, um, well, only paramedics or doctors with experience should do this. But people, when they're having like, um, when their heart rate, it's, it's high and, 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 and you try all these maneuvers and you cannot get it down. If you massage the vagus nerve, it, it can drop it it can but if you do it too much or too hard you can actually drop it too low and then you can pass out or you can die <laughs> so you gotta be careful with that anyway um, what I'm what the point is the vagus nerve is very important when it comes to calming down so chanting singing helps with that um massage therapy um seeing a therapist like a real therapist like a licensed therapist or or, or or a psychologist a clinician uh, which is a person with a PhD in clinical psychology uh, is very important it helps a lot too to deal with trauma and and all these issues that all the sequels of, of the trauma leaves behind so I want to talk about this because it's very important as a person that went through a lot like tons and tons of trauma for many many years of my life and I'm still going through for other reasons not because my per my personal life it's amazing I have an amazing partner an amazing family and support system very I'm very loved um well super well taken care of um and for that I feel super blessed and beyond blessed and very lucky i'm very lucky to have such an amazing support system not a lot of people have that but i'm talking about the past like many years ago when my life i was under i went through two long relationships two relationships that were extremely abusive like beyond comprehension abusive uh the first one almost it lasted nine years almost 10 years I think and this person was older than me and groomed me I got groomed uh, which means that you're young you're, you're a minor you're a child you're innocent and you're very impressionable and malleable so people prepare you and, and, and manipulate you and, and mold you to their to their way of thinking so they can do with you whatever they want 
so that's what this person did to me uh, and abused me horribly for nine years until I finally got the courage to leave and with the help of some friends and family members I was able to leave and hence why I moved to this country I, moved, I came here many years ago escaping not only a dictatorship because when Chavez won I knew we all knew well not all of us but some of us knew he was he was going to be a dictator and I left after he won I left because I knew what was coming it was not good second I was being abused I almost got killed uh, by my ex so I, I left and that's why I left my country several several years ago like over two decades two decades ago uh, it's been a long time since I left so I've been in, in the USA I've been in the United States for a long time obviously I'm a citizen I've been a citizen for a long time but um and then the second relationship was a man that I thought there was going to be this amazing person because in the beginning he he pretended to be this super cool nice guy uh, and of course I was so young and dumb and emotionally dysregulated and I didn't know better I didn't have um a so back then I didn't have a support system uh, I was pretty much on my own I didn't have money I didn't have I didn't know about therapy, psychology, none of that. Uh, I wish I did. Um, so I felt in the hands of another psychopath. Um, this time, this psychopath was not very physical. It was more of a mental, verbal abuse. He got a little physical a few times. Not as bad as the first one. But, the, but sometimes the verbal and the mental abuse is so intense that you prefer, you rather the person to punch you and slap you than keep talking. Because the mental and the verbal terrorism, that shit, it wears you down. Actually, that's a technique that uh, a lot of, you know, like CIA, FBI, KGB, like, you know, all these like intelligence uh, um, agencies, they use uh, the, they want a way to break you down besides waterboarding you <laughs> besides you know, being waterboard it's is mental breakdown first of all they they exhaust you they make you on purpose they make you uh not sleep they they deprive you from sleep because when you're deprived from sleep you can think straight you you feel horrible you get desperate anxious you actually you can hallucinate it's dangerous if you don't sleep so they make sure that you don't sleep that you're exhausted so you break down so that it's easy for them to break you down and then they terrorize you with verbal like talking to you non-stop telling you all kinds of crazy shit um intimidating intimidating you scaring you until people break down and poof, spill the beans because they can't handle it anymore so that's what psychopaths narcissists malignant narcissists they do they break you down, they break your spirit, they make sure you don't sleep well, that you don't eat well. They are constantly t t telling you horrible shit, yelling at you for no reason, fighting, breaking shit, punching. It's, it's, a, it's a terror. It's an it's a emotional and mental terror, terror. They're terrorizing you. They're terrorists. They're emotional terrorists. So they do that to break you down. So you give in so they can break your soul and make you into nothing so they can do whatever they want with you it's horrible it's so sometimes the the verbal and mental abuse it's even worse than being raped and let me tell you being raped is horrible i know because i've been raped several times brutally raped to the point i was bleeding uh i've been beaten with a bat, with a baseball bat. I've been punched, knocked the fuck out, slapped, uh, hit with all kinds of shit, pushed, kicked, you name it. I've been tortured. I've been choked. I mean, li literally lifted up and choked almost till I fucking passed out. Um, I've been, uh, people have put a knife on my, my neck, a gun in my head. I've been abused pretty bad. <laughs> I was molested when I was when I was an innocent child. When I was five years old, I was molested, sexually molested by a family member. Not a family member. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. By a friend 
of the family. A friend of the family. Not a family member, I'm sorry. Scratch that. <laughs> no, thank God. No one in my family has ever done anything like that. To me or to anyone for that matter that I know. But no. There, there, there's some kooky people in my family, but they're not that kooky or evil. They have other issues, but they're not nothing like that. So no, I've never been uh, abused or molested by any family member. No, 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 no. Thank God. It was a friend of the family that did that when I was five years old. I was sleeping innocently in my bed, and this person, uh, the person that was taking care of me at the moment, um, literally went to look for something real quick, and that person took advantage of the moment, got in my room, and did whatever he had to do, he did. And I never remember remember that actually because I was so young and because when you're so young you don't know better you don't understand what's going on, so my mind my mind uh, repressed that suppressed that for years and years, and I remembered. The first time I remember being molested, I was eighteen, and actually I was I got into an argument with my mom, arguing over something I can't remember. It was a heated. It was a very heated argument. And I was yelling. I was like, by the way, so-and-so fucking did this to me when I was five years old. And my mom became like, pale white. Like, what the fuck? She got, she was in such a shock. Then when she reacted, when she finally came out of it, she lost her shit. She's like, I'm going to kill her. I mean, my mom lost her shit. And then I was scared. because, like, oh my God, she's going to look for this person. I'm going to kill it. My mom literally took off. She's like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I go to jail. I'm going to kill the motherfucker. She took off running. She took off and I couldn't. I tried to like catch her and she, my mom was fast as fuck. She used to be a runner. She used to be a track runner. So good luck trying. And she's, she's tiny and skinny, super agile. Good luck catching my mom. Uh, she's still the same way. <laughs> um, and she's super strong too. So pff, she took off running. And I'm like, okay, good luck with that. And f thank God the dude moved away to a different state. And she couldn't find him. She was going to kill him. I don't I have no doubt in my mind. And if I was a mother and I had a child, I would probably do the same shit. So hence, everything's coming back to full circle. And that's what I said. Would you forgive? Do you have do you have it in, in you? Would you forgive someone that rapes and tortures your child, your innocent child? Would you forgive? So the question is to forgive or not forgive? That's the question. I want to hear your feedback. Let me know what do you think about that. And uh I appreciate every everyone for I I I I'm going to thank you in advance. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you uh everyone for for the people that are very nice to me and very supportive. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to everyone that sends me DMs and private messages and 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 asks how I'm doing and all this stuff and checking on me. That means a lot to me and thank you so much uh, thank you for everyone that say happy birthday back in august um to me birthdays are extremely important uh they mean a lot to me and whoever takes a little minute out of their life to say happy birthday to me or to anyone to me that means a lot so thank you guys for all the beautiful and positive and supportive messages and to the people that are haters or assholes and they're fucking envious pieces of shit, fuck you, suck a bag of dicks, fuck off, you can suck, yeah, a bag of dicks and just go to hell. I don't give a fuck about you. You're just, uh, I don't know, you have issues. Go see a therapist because you have problems. But the majority of the people that, that you know, are in contact with me and, and interact with me, the majority are good people and people that I know that care about me and, and and respect me and have love for me and I have love and respect for them too. So to all those people, I love you. Thank you so much for everything. And to those motherfuckers, envious pieces of shit, like I said, fuck.
fuck off, fuck you, burning hell, and suck a bag of dicks. Um, I feel bad for you because you are you are morally, intellectually, and spiritually bankrupt. So I feel, I kind of feel bad for you. I, I do and I don't, but mostly I feel bad for you. So yeah, go see a therapist because you need a lot of help. Um, and, but anyway... I want to end this on a positive note. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching. And leave me your feedback on, in the comments. Or because I'm going to post this on Facebook. So this video. So thank you so much. To forgive or not forgive. To forgive or not forgive. That's the question. Would you forgive someone that brutally raped and tortured your child let me know okay love you guys take care and woohoo yeah for our victory because democracy won yes baby and with that said i'm not a i'm, I'm not a, 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 a let me let me end this i'm an independent thinker i i don't i have no loyalty to any party i despise the republicans as much as this as i despise the democrats because they're both corrupt in their own ways but there's always a lesser evil both are evil but one is a little lesser than the other one at least the democrats tend to um create a little bit more balance and more um keep things kind of more calm and less divided unlike the republicans or people that are weird to the extreme far right. You know, they, they tend to be fascist and very authoritarian and very rigid. And the same thing goes to the extreme left. So I don't agree with any extremes. I'm not part of any party. I'm not loyal to any fucking political party. Most pol pol politicians are fucking corrupt, liars, and pieces of shit. I don't trust anybody 100%. Um, I'm, a, I'm an amicable a skeptic or I'm, I'm, I'm yeah I'm an amicable a skeptic so you know people have to prove themselves to me to, for me to believe you know and uh, I'm not really happy Biden and, and, and Kamala were not my my choice were not my first I just don't didn't like them as a, as as politics as politicians uh, Biden has a shady background Kamala has a shady background that I'm not really cool with, but they are way better than what we have right now in office, which is horror. It's just pure horror, like insanity, bad shit, crazy type shit going on. And we need to get that shit out. So I voted for whoever could get this motherfucker out. So I, you know, I put aside my pride and just let it go and vote it for what's right. I don't like them and things are not going to magically, you know, Biden and Kamala are not our saviors. Things are not going to get better magically and things are not going to happen right away. We have to stay on our toes and keep fighting the good fight and make sure to make the, uh, to make sure that we make these motherfuckers accountable for their actions. So... That's why we have to vote. We have to stay very involved in, in the process of, of politics. And people that are neutral, like, I don't like politics. I don't like that. I stay neutral. I don't do anything about it. Blah, blah, blah. Guess what, motherfucker? Everything you do in life is politicized. Everything. The water you drink, the air you breathe, where you live, the, your food, the food you eat, the roads that you, you drive on, the, the curb that you walk on, uh, the schools that your kids or the schools that, you, that your kids go to or the schools that you go to, everything, all the sun, everything, pollution, everything, everything is politicized. Everything is involved in politics. Politics is involved in everything, in every aspect of our lives. So if you're not part of, if, if, you're, if you don't get involved and you don't know who the fuck is who and you don't vote for who is going to be in charge of us or who is going to represent us, that's how we get fucked. That's how we get fucked over because people are ignorant and they'd rather be in this state of delusional 
in this fantasy in bubble fantasy land bullshit of 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 delusion dude no you gotta get real like get get with the program get with reality get with the motherfucking program you have to get involved because if you don't get involved and you don't do shit guess what you're part of the problem you're not part of the solution so stop being part of the problem and start being part of the solution become proactive on this shit i'm not saying that you gotta become this fucking super activist political no but like it doesn't take that 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 much work it doesn't it's not that hard it doesn't take that much time to do a little research you guys are on your motherfucking phone all the fucking time uh, watching tiktok bullshit youtube bullshit videos fucking facebook instagram you guys waste time wa- watching super stupid dumb shit that just dumbs you down and it fucking lowers your iq and your in your in your attention span so stop wasting your your time on stupid shit and, and and at least dedicate a little bit of your time to reading a book reading the news uh, trying to find and do your research on your own get educated learn about shit so you're not depending on other motherfuckers telling you what to do and what to believe in try believe in your on your own shit have your own convictions have personality have character be yourself but be smart about it use critical thinking so you discern the good from the bad try to see all points of views not all just one one point of view try to to learn from all points of views so that way you broaden your horizon of understanding and, and learning be smart be proactive about shit be part of the fucking solution and stop being part of the problem get involved with shit so when we vote and we choose people to represent us we choose the right people so we get because politicians are public servers they're, they're public servants they're supposed to serve us and represent us and protect us and be for us not against us so you got to choose the right motherfucking people but if you don't get to know who the fuck is running in your area in your community or in your state or in your county or in your country then you're fucked that's why these motherfuckers the fucking pieces of shit psychopathic narcissistic motherfuckers win because they win by default most of the time because most people don't fucking vote so get with the program vote jesus fucking christ read a little do some research on google about whatever people is running in your county in, in, in your city in your state or in your country just you don't have to read hell books just get a little bit acquainted acquainted with with the people around you with your community because everything starts from your community first of all everything starts from in your house <laughs> your family unit then from there it expands it to the community and then from the community to the whole state and then from the whole state to the whole country to the whole country to the whole fucking world so yes you have to get involved stop being so lazy so so complacent and so fucking obtuse and so delusional privileged in your fucking fantasy bubble of bullshit anyway (laughs) i got passionate (laughs) sorry i get passionate about social and political subjects because it pisses me off i see how we got here that's how we got here with this psycho with the orange psycho because people are just fucking don't give a fuck they're delusional they're, they're, they don't educate themselves and they're just they're lazy and complacent and privileged and whatever you know and and, and selfish <sighs> goose fraba goose fraba <laughs> okay guys thank you so much for listening and i hope to hear your feedback so i love you uh, have a wonderful week take care and remember be part of the solution and celebrate life live life live life to the fullest um and remember there's power and not forgiving too you have the power and you control the power so listen to your heart listen to your guts to your instincts and follow that and just breathe drink a lot of water eat healthy love you know and that's it take care peace (laughs) bye guys love y'all